Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Welcome to another episode of Vuganazo here on the Big Daddy Liberty Show. My name, of course, is Sihle Ngobese, a.k.a. Big Daddy Liberty. As I said, this is the Monday edition as we come to you weekdays from 7 a.m. Whether you're watching this broadcast on Facebook or on YouTube, do me a solid favor, please hit that like button and please share this show. It's super important for you to share the show. It doesn't take much of a time to do that. Speaking about a easy way to find us, find us, of course, on our website at www.bigdaddyliberty.com. There, of course, you can also pledge some support, some a financial contribution to the show. Guys, 100 Rand a month is more than enough to help us keep going and to br- build a team here at the Vuga Nazo show. With that being said, welcome to it. Happy Monday. Let's get straight into the news. Okay, we begin here, of course, where the National Assembly, that's Parliament, of course, has effectively passed and endorsed the expropriation bill. Yes, that piece of... Mm. Uh, maybe I should hold my tongue in so far as expletives, but that nonsense piece of legislation that effectively empowers politicians to confiscate, to take your stuff. And I've said this before in indeed one of the more viral videos I did, one of the first videos I did as Big Daddy Liberty was to warn you against giving politicians the power to take things from you, um, i.e. expropriating things from you, especially how politicians want it to be, namely to expropriate or take, confiscate something from you without compensation. Effectively, theft. I warned you against giving politicians that power because historically, the record of history is absolutely crystal clear when it comes to expropriation with nil compensation. It is theft and it is a power which politicians expand ever increasingly for themselves and becomes that is the exercise of that power by politicians mostly lefty politicians it becomes arbitrary and pernicious in its nature look at how this gloating ANC commie, this leftist fool of a politician celebrates effectively being given the power to steal from you greetings good evening everybody it's been a marathon day. It's almost nine o'clock. Uh, one thing that I'm very proud of is that we passed the expropriation bill today uh, as the ANC. So uh, we worked hard. No compensation. So to our team, the ANC team, great work. Now we can return the land to our people. Amantla. Yes, look at how happy Faiz Jacobs, a uh, ANC member of parliament, gloats about being given and effectively giving his party, the ANC, and of course his chums in the EFF, yes, those red in tooth and claw commies, the power to steal from you. He actually celebrates it as somehow a win for his people. Bull, absolute crap. There is no win here except for politicians and the political elites who will suddenly marshal state force, that is state power, to steal from you. And it's no surprise that the EFF, therefore, and parties like ATM and other lefty type organizations would clap for this nonsense but where there was poten- potentially sorry a surprise is who put this bill before parliament a member of good yes that's right a party you perhaps thought was an opposition party actually isn't it stands in lockstep with the ANC and EFF and other lefties Patricia DeLille yes that individual who's hopped from one party to the next literally as minister in U Cyril Ramaphosa's government proposed this piece of legislation. Now, the, I want to read very quickly from uh, News 24, which summarized the story quite nicely and indeed brought forward the fact that it was the introduction of the bill was by Public Works and Infrastructure Minister U Patricia De Lille saying that expropriation wasn't unique, she said, but uh, it quotes her as saying the following. 
Delil said compensation would be determined by, quote, agreement between the state and the owners. And if no agreement was reached, it would be, quote, decided and approved by a court of law. You can expect, of course, that those courts of law will be set up by the politicians themselves. But in any event, it goes on and reads, this bill brings certainty to South Africans and investors. I'm not sure how that's the case, but anyway, because it clearly outlines how expropriation can be done and on what basis. So it's extremely dangerous to suggest that government government will arbitrarily take pro people's property such as their homes. Delil, the snake in the grass, said, end of quote. And indeed, it is a snake in the grass, snake oil salesman type argument because I've said this before and I'll say it again. Anytime a politician gives themselves powers that they can slowly and surely expand over time, those powers will eventually be used on you. Those powers will eventually be used in taking from you the faith, flag, family and freedom type South African because there's one thing politicians are opposed to. It is you exercising your freedom. That is one thing politicians across the board, whether they're on the left or the right, often find themselves being in conflict with us, the ordinary citizenry. So that as I conclude my point, I will say this. This piece of legislation, the bill that is, having now been passed in the National Assembly, will head to the National Council of Provinces and eventually, once uh, uh, that's done, will have to be signed by the President to come into law. It is now more important than ever for you to understand the power of rallying together South Africans in order to fight bad ideas. And any time you want to give a politician more power, in this case the power to confiscate something from you, because remember, property, the expropriation of property, isn't just land or a house or whatever the case may be. Property can expand in definition to the phone you're watching me on, the computer you might be working on, the desk, the very wallet and the cash in your po pocket. All of these things are property and politicians are effectively getting the power in this country to take these from you and effectively be able to also take it from you without compensating you for confiscating that action. It is now up to you, it's incumbent on you to rally with fellow South Africans and do so in a way in which says, actually, no, damn it, this is where I draw the line in protection of what is mine. The freedom as a South African to say, this is mine. And no grubby politician, even if it's your favorite politician, should ever have the right to confiscate it for you. And if anybody comes to you and says, oh, well, expropriation is actually a pro-black policy or whatever the case may be, just look at some of these headlines of black individuals who faced the prospect of having their property confiscated by politicians. None of this points to this policy being pro-black, and I would implore you not to be dribbled and not to be fooled. Expropriation without compensation is an anti-South African policy, defeated by standing together with fellow South Africans. Okay, so we stay in Parliament, and indeed another story where, once again, politicians in this country and their friends, you know, the political elites, Never miss an opportunity to quite literally steal from you. You'll remember that story, of course, if you read it in the media, of how five billion rand. Now, let me repeat that. Five billion rand. Billions upon billions of rands that were stolen, effectively, from the National Skill Funds were said to be, have just gone missing, lol. <laughs> um, according to Ubleid Nzimande, the Minister of Higher Education in this country. Now, very quickly, for those who don't know, the National Skills Fund is effectively a pot of cash which you contribute to if you are a working person via the Skills Development Act and the Skills Development Levy Act, which basically takes a portion from your salary in order to contribute towards this kitty meant of course to upskill and continuously skill workers in the country so therefore it becomes a rather big kitty of cash here who guess who has access to it yes that's right our famous friends politicians the political elites and those effectively who are tied within that crony system so that i'm not surprised therefore that five 
billion rand has gone missing from it. Now, the was a there was rather an investigation and a report, a forensic report into that missing five billion rand, which that same minister who played in Zimande, who's the minister, as I mentioned, of higher education, science and innovation, had tried to effectively conceal as he forwarded on to SCOPA, which is a body within parliament that's meant to uh, hold uh, government uh, departments to account. Now, the SCOPA chairperson, thank God, a good mate of mine, Mkulego Khengwa of the IFP, uh, basically said, no way in hell is he going to allow this report to, quote, be uh, viewed as as confidential. In fact, let me read from this news, uh, or rather from the Independent, who wrote about this attempt by Opladen Zimande to keep the report under wraps. Well, effectively, he requested it by saying the following. He says, we quote, we request that until all processes before law enforcement agencies and internal departmental disciplinary processes are concluded, the report, that's the forensic report, be treated in terms of Rule 198 of the National Assembly, especially Subrule 1C, read with Subrule 4A. This he says, as he continues, he's submitting that our request for confidentiality is reasonable and justifiable in an open and democratic society like ours and would not want to be ones violating people's rights to a fair trial. That's according to, of course, end of quote, who played in Zimande. Now, as I said, Mkulego Kianga of the IFP, who chairs the SCOPA uh, 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 committee, pardon me, in Parliament, saying hell no to this request and actually saying it has to become uh, public insofar as this is who, uh, that is the public, are affected by this report or the contents therein. Uh, he, of course, speaking to Pretoria News in that regard. And really, kudos to him for saying that. Because as I conclude the story, I'll say this. For far too often, we've seen politicians, the political elites, effectively abuse processes of the state in order to conceal their theft and effectively their looting of public funds. Now, I'm not going to cast an aspersion and suggest that this is what Unzimande was doing necessarily, although I would argue, I would argue along those same lines, that he would not be averse to doing this if the people implicated in this report, even though he argues the basis of it is, oh, to ensure a free and fair trial for them, would perhaps even be individuals who are aligned, potentially, to the political elites in this country. It wouldn't surprise me then if, he, if that was the real basis, if you will, of why he wanted this report, at least for now, to remain hush and confidential before Scopa, so that actually... When there are instances of politicians doing the right thing, as is the case with Mkulego Kengwa, we've got to support them because sunlight is the best disinfectant against the greedy, the corrupt, the fraudulent type in our country and the looters. All right, in my final story for today, and as I'd already mentioned on social media, after the verdict was dropped, where Julius Melema was found not guilty of assault, I made the argument, and I'll make this argument here again, that there is clearly a two-tiered justice system in this country. One, for the rich, the politically elite and politicians, and another for us, the ordinary folks, the plebs, if you will, where they get special favors, special treatment, and we don't. Why do I say this? It begs belief that Julius Melema is found not guilty for beating a police officer when, in fact, video showed us this. The judge, therefore, a magistrate, uh, Le L Leyland, pardon me, Punsami, telling you not to believe what your lying eyes are showing you. This is what your eyes showed you. Yeah, that, that very incident, which your eyes clearly show you, show you Uchulis Malema and Umbuiseni Ngozi, his lackey uh, in the EFF, approaching that police officer clearly with the intent to 
if not enter into an argument or confrontation, definitely to beat him up, and then proceeding to beat him up. Uh, initially, with other police officers and soldiers watching until they then eventually intervene. Somehow that, we're meant to believe by the magistrate, that doesn't show real intent to commit the assault, which is, as he mentioned, an unlawful act. It is a weird thing to listen to. And for those of us who aren't legal eagles, and maybe that's the basis of why I'm not understanding this judgment, for those of us who are confused by this, this is what the judge actually said in his own words. The intention is clear, is I see no reason not to accept it in light of the discrepancies of the complainant's evidence. This leads the court then to the crux of the state submission, where the defense of justification is a valid defense based on the evidence on the record. This, this is a question which the court must also answer on the basis of the evidence in its totality. It is right, Lord, that there are different types of grounds of justification. Some well-known grounds of justification is private defense, necessity, consent, and official capacity. Defense specifically also refer the court to consider the putative private defense. Now, based on all the principles in law concerning justification, it is clear that the court should apply a subjective test and establish the state of mind of the accused at the time of the committal of the offense. In terms of putative defense, the act will remain unlawful, but it will exclude culpability. In this regard, I found that the state of mind of the accused above mentioned and thus effect culpability. Court finding, I do then find that the action of the accused at first glance appears to be unlawful, but after carefully assessing the evidence, one can never assault any other human being than in gain of an entry. The evidence in its totality also confirms the version of the accused before court. The accused further lack intent to commit the offence of assault in this regard. The, in this regard, the court finds that even, even when the court carefully assess the version of the accused, the court finds that the accused version is reasonably possibly true. Therefore, I accept that the defense of justification is to be upheld and that the accused had no intent to assault the complainant based on the evidence which is listed above, based on the reasons which is listed above. Both accused is therefore found not guilty and acquitted of the charge of assault. Yep, so that it leaves, as I said, the rest of us who don't speak legalese and the mumbo-jumbo that it can also be very confused by this verdict. And it, it, begs, it begs the question, what precedent is this setting? Can I then, perhaps, the ordinary pleb, beat up a police officer because maybe I'm not in the right state of mind? And can I argue in court that I have a justification to impede a police officer uh, by beating him up? If I was a cop, i will be very worried about the precedent, as I said, that this judgment sets. And once again, maybe because I'm not a lawyer or someone who speaks fluent, I mean, excuse me, legalese, <clears throat> Maybe I need to bring some lawyers onto the show and help have them rather help us unpack this particular judgment and really begin to speak to the full merits of it or the lack thereof. So look out for the Wednesday edition of the Big Daddy Liberty Show where we'll do exactly that. We'll have some experts on the show to help us unpack this judgment in its real terms. With that being said, I'll say this as a parting shot. This judgment reeks of effectively a soft glove approach that seems to be used when it comes to individuals who are influential, rich perhaps, or political elites or politicians. As I'd be very surprised if perhaps an ordinary person, an ordinary faith, flag, family and freedom person who had done the same thing, it would surprise me if you and I had gotten off like clearly Malema does. All right, folks, we end this one over here. Let me know what your thoughts are on the, any of the stories that we shared today by finding me on my website. That's www.bigdaddyliberty.com. Of course, all of our social media information is in the descriptor of the video. And do me a solid favor, good people. 
like the show and definitely share the show to a wider audience. And if you're watching on YouTube in particular, subscribe to the show, hit that bell notification so that every weekday from 7 a.m. you'll be notified when Vuganazo is on your screens. Enjoy your day. Happy Monday. And I'll see you tomorrow.